Quantum Marketing Radio, the marketing podcast for insurance agents and financial professionals. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Quantum Marketing Radio. I am joined by two special guests today, um, Michael Kittinger and Daniel Henzelka. And these are two really awesome marketing guys that I've gotten to know over the last year. And they're going to be part of our upcoming Cracking the Prospecting Code Summit, talking about how to bring in new prospects using strategies involving LinkedIn. So welcome, guys, to the podcast. Thanks, Jeff. Glad to be here. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. So obviously, this has been a crazy year with you know the pandemic and economic lockdowns and you know unemployment spiking and market volatility. Um, what's the challenge right now for people that are that you're working with and in, in getting new prospects to engage with them? Yeah. So. You know, I think the biggest thing is financial advisors historically have really relied on on word of mouth, on in-person meetings. You know, when it comes to using new technologies, when it comes to moving online, the financial services industry seems to be several years uh, behind, you know, a lot of other industries. And so if nothing else, I think the, the pandemic um, has, has almost forced the industry to innovate. Uh, to move online, to move to LinkedIn, to use Zoom, to use, you know, GoToWebinar, to use these different tools that other industries, quite honestly, have been using for for a number of years. Um, so that's been the biggest thing is that I've seen is, um, you know, advisors when BNI meetings stopped, chamber lunches came to a, you know, screeching halt and all this. I mean, a lot of advisors kind of threw up their hands going, well, now what do I do? Because the way I've always done business really is out of my control and I don't, I can't go and do that. Um, so it's a great opportunity for those advisors who are willing to, to innovate, who are, you know, who, who want to move online. Um, there's certainly a lot of opportunities and that's kind of where we have stepped in and helped fill that need, helping get, it, get advisors uh, online, you know, online, moving to helping them prospect and generate sales opportunities through LinkedIn and everything. So uh, great opportunity, but again, the ones who aren't gonna, shift and we don't know right if this pandemic if things are going to open up today tomorrow a month from now i mean some states have started opening up but you see cases rising again as things open so you know we may have another shutdown it may be six months it may be 12 more months before things get back to a kind of normalcy right so um but yeah that's been probably the biggest thing i've seen daniel i you probably have a few things to add yeah just just to add to it i think you know michael i have to definitely agree with you i think you know this whole shutdown i think has created one of the biggest opportunities for advisors and the opportunity really that it has created is to start to differentiate yourself because one of the things that we're seeing right now as far as the whole industry is kind of being forced to move than being more virtual it also can become a little bit impersonal because yeah we're, we're you know everybody's on zoom you know nobody's really meeting in person but I think through technology, we can definitely tap into and advisors can tap into is making it more personal, make it more about, uh, you know, branding themselves and saying, hey, listen, this is who I am. This is who I work with. And hey, this is how I help my you know, clients. And if you're interested, let's have a conversation. And we can do that in many different formats from a perspective of, you know, on video, but making it more personal because it's all really about building a relationship. And I think marketing now post this whole era, post COVID has turned into becoming more, hey, you're an advisor, you're a human being, connect with people at a human level. And I think this is the biggest opportunity that really advisors have at this point. Well, and I know Jay Abraham has, has called what most advisors do, uh, the diving board method of marketing, meaning they only have like a single pillar. And right now they're on that diving board about to jump into an empty pool, which is a little risky, as you, as you all know. So. Um, so adding this pillar is kind of, you know, even if things do return to normal at some point in the near future, adding this pillar, this um, digital marketing channel through LinkedIn is a wise move because now you at least have two pillars supporting your business instead of that one diving board and an empty pool there. 
And uh, when things change, you're not necessarily like, oh, you know, I'm completely out of business. So I think the value in what you guys are helping agents do is is uh, can't really be understated just because adding that extra pillar is something you probably should have done a long time ago anyways, even before the pandemic. But now is the time to do it for sure, right? To keep things going. Yeah, and just to add a little bit to that, you know, when, if you have an audience that by definition meets some sort of criteria in terms of being your ideal audience, now they may not be ready to buy now and all that, but but when you build a network or an audience and you're able to at will reach out to them, whether that's through providing contact content through like LinkedIn, sending an email, a text message, calling them up on the phone, right? Like, um, you know, but having that audience, that's really what a, you know, if you think about, um, you know, Facebook buying Instagram and on all these acquisitions, they weren't buying the technology, they were buying the audience, right? The power and a lot of the money is in the audience. And so uh, uh, I guess a, a, a byproduct of what we help advisors do is build their LinkedIn connections, their network, build that audience that again, anytime they post content on LinkedIn or in their CRM, they now have their, con you know, the audience's contact information and everything. I mean, if it's, you know, having that, it really is the ability to consistently build a business is when you have that audience, when you have their attention. Um, and that's where I know when I was an advisor for over a decade, I never built an audience. It was all one-on-one. -on -one. I didn't have, uh, you know, a, a group that I could go out and consistently provide value to, consistently have engaging conversations with. And quite frankly, I mean, that's why I struggled. It, I didn't learn this stuff until I made the transition to becoming a marketer. And it was while I was learning it that I was like, this is what I love and this is what's missing. So let me go learn this and then bring it back to other advisors because, you know, as well as I do, you know, advisors get their designations, their certifications, there's all these, you know, all these compliance things and licenses and everything they have to go through. You know what they're not taught is how to market, <laughs> you know, it, it's how to create a plan, how to build a portfolio, how to do this and that. But, um, but I know what I experienced in talking to dozens and dozens of advisors is, is how do you build an audience? How do you provide value? And then how do you keep that conversation going so that it leads to sales opportunities? And that's, I mean, again, that's kind of where Daniel and I came together and found, you know, found a, a, a you know, a, an opportunity in the marketplace serving other advisors and, and really have stepped all in, you know, in fulfilling that need. So let's circle back for a second for people that maybe aren't familiar with you or your company. Um, I kind of wanted to start off with at least the, the LinkedIn piece so people understand that that's what we're going to be talking about today. But let's uh, let's hear a little bit more about your background. You know, how did you guys come to be uh, traffic and pipelines, LinkedIn marketing guys? You know, I know you both come from the financial services business. Tell us a little bit about each of your backgrounds and how uh, you ended up here. Yeah, so Daniel and I both former advisors. Uh, I was an advisor for about 13 years, and I'll let Daniel share his story uh, as well. But um, you know, I, I, it was struggling as an advisor. Well, actually, I was I was a specialized advisor with a company as a W2 employee, and then went out on my own and kind of became a generalist. And when you know, going from specialist to generalist, my revenue and my my income basically plummeted. Thinking if I offered more, I would you know make more. And unfortunately, the exact opposite was true. The more I offered, the less I made, um, because the messaging and everything got convoluted. Um, but Daniel and I were in a mastermind, uh, kind of a high-end mastermind group last year and came together and we were talking about how we help, who we serve and how we help people and everything. And um, both having been former advisors and seeing the need in the marketplace for advisors to really get out there and help them craft their message and create offers and, uh, and build that audience. Um, you know, we came together kind of end of last year, um, right around Thanksgiving time and everything. And you know, we, we had a few wins and then we hit the holidays and then first of the year we had a few wins and then COVID hit. And so it's, you know, like any business, there's obviously been some ups and downs, but we've been on a steady, uh, very steady trajectory uh, in the right direction. Um, you know, now that we've really kind of got the, got it all dialed in and everything, but, um, but yeah, I mean, ultimately we're two advisors who are just out there to make the world a better place and help other advisors grow and serve more people. Yeah, and I'm just I'm going to comment to that. I mean, my story is very similar. A little bit longer. I was in the financial services, you know, for the last 25 years, 
and kind of got recruited into the, you know, recruited into the business. And often I make these statements that I say, you know, most financial advisors are accidental advisors and they're accidental business owners. And, you know, similar story to, to Michael, the first year I was in the business, Strictly could sell disability insurance. So I was a specialist. And then somebody says, hey, if you get your life license, if you get your investment license, then I got my CFP. Uh, you know, I became a generalist. And what I didn't realize that the more specialized you are, the better effect you're going to have on the way that you can run your business. You're going to be more referable because people can actually share and describe what you do. The more generalized you come in, and you know, if most advisors, unfortunately, are licensed menu advisors, it's kind of like they have a menu of <laughs> products or, or designations they have, and they're just trying to hope when they connect with somebody that something's going to resonate with someone. And that's really for me when I described the, you know, the 18 years that I was actually in the business practicing as an advisor. It was more like a one-year experience, 18 times over, because every year I was trying to figure out what do I need to change, what I need to do. And I thought getting designations, I thought becoming a better technician was it. But as Michael mentioned, it wasn't until I got out of the you know, financial business and started starting marketing that I realized that no, you know, it doesn't matter how good you are being an advisor, if you, know, if you don't have marketing, if you don't have a system and a process, how to put your message and connect with the right audience pretty well every single day, you know, you're kind of like a, you know, the best looking billboard in the middle of Sahara Desert where nobody ever sees it. Mm -hmm. So that kind of has been the struggle. And I think most advisors, unfortunately, are kind of going through the same thing, especially right now, because, yeah, you know, COVID then and this whole thing has completely changed the whole industry. And I think a lot of uh, advisors, a lot of companies are struggling to try to figure it out. I was just on a call this morning with one of our clients and he was talking kind of with the corporate where they were asking him like, hey, you know what, you're doing all of these things, like what are you doing? And, uh, you know, because we've helped to kind of brand him and help him start connecting with this. And I think the financial industry is struggling with marketing because they think like, well, if I go and pay a, a marketing consultant or, uh, you know, $20,000 to go and build a website, then I'm gonna have success. And the reality is, is it doesn't work like that because yeah, you might have the best looking website, but if there is no traffic coming to it, you know, it, again, it's kind of like a billboard in the middle of nowhere and, and you're not really getting results. So there are small little things, you know, that we, we keep on talking about. I don't know who said the code first. You know, there are small little hinges that swing big doors. And this was the conversation I had with uh, our client this morning is telling him, listen, you need to have a process. There need to be a system and a process of how you actually bring a client on a journey. And you can't go, you know, kind of mention it, you know diving board and i think most advisors and this is why i was taught you meet somebody and you kind of go for the sale right from the get-go that doesn't work anymore right you need to figure out a way have a system and a process how you actually get somebody's interest how do you engage them how do you nurture that relationship before you can even ask if there is an opportunity to do something you can kind of go and rush into you know into sales and at, you know, at the end of the day, it's all about differentiation. And that's really what we, you know, what we help advisors to do, to start to brand themselves and start to get them to think about themselves more as a business owner. And again, every business needs to have a way how to get in front of their audience on a consistent basis, because if you don't have that, you're kind of hustling all the time. And that, unfortunately, that's what I experienced when I was an advisor. I felt like I was hustling all the time. And I really wasn't a building a business. I was almost running a pretend business because I didn't even understand what it meant to run a business. So what you're describing sounds a lot like online dating. <laughs> <laughs> is that the yeah? Is that in a lot of ways, that I should be having no. But in a lot of ways, it is. I mean, it's it's finding that right match, right? The person who has those qualities who um, that that you want to attract, and you know, just like dating, you're not trying to date every single person out there. Right. There are certain qualities, there are certain attributes that you want to find in a, somebody that, you know, you want to date or you want to be in a relationship with. And this is the same way. Don't go out and try to serve anybody and everybody. Figure out what are the qualities? Who is it that you are best equipped to serve? And then let's let's put let's systematically put things out there, content and offers and things like that, that attract that right person to you. Um, yeah, and so, and even, I mean, I'll go back real quick to the last question about, tra you know, company name. I mean, traffic and, and pipelines, you need traffic, you need quality traffic, people who are consistently coming into your world, and you need a pipeline, a way to filter them down and move them along the customer journey into a sales opportunity and ultimately into becoming a client. So that, you know, 
I don't know, it seemed fitting. We had thrown out quite a few different names when we were originally talking about it. And, you know, ultimately we said, what is what do advisors need? Well, you need quality traffic and you need a pipeline to move them through, right? So why not just name this traffic and pipelines? And it was like, well, that kind of seems obvious now. So. Yeah. And, and just to go back to you, Jeff, uh, one of the first coaches that I heard around marketing, he mentioned this to me, marketing is like kissing, right? You need both people to lean in. You know, if, 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 and unfortunately, like I said, a lot of people lean in first and the other person's backing off. It's just a really awkward and a weird situation. <laughs> so I think from that perspective, that, that's really what it's, you know, what it's about is, is having that, having something of value. And I think this is really where, uh, you know, what we're doing and what's really working with our uh, clients is helping them to really differentiate themselves, you know, uh, build that right traffic and, and have the resources where they're actually connecting with people and both of them are kind of leaning in and when that right time comes it's just a matter of hopping on a call and having that conversation and moving the uh, relationship forward yeah. so you guys are both going to be appearing on the upcoming uh cracking the prospecting code at the end of october and i know you're going to be talking about linkedin um maybe uh describe a little bit about what you're going to share on your your upcoming presentation so people have an idea about what to look forward to what they're going to get out of uh, seeing you live during the summit yeah we're gonna i mean basically talk about how to generate sales opportunities with your ideal potential clients without paid ads or, or in-person networking events um i mean ultimately that's what our company is about that's our focus that's our you know our hook if you will um, I know advisors and there's other marketers who are pushing, you know, spending all this money on Facebook ads and this and that. Um, having run over a million dollars in client ad spend since I started in the marketing space in 2016, you know, LinkedIn just, you get much better quality. You get more of a, 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 a conversation going, more of that dating analogy, right? More of a back and forth. Um, so it's, we're going to be talking about how to, how to leverage that, how to optimize your profile, how to how to go how to properly leverage linkedin i mean again i was an when i was an advisor i was like oh well i tried linkedin it didn't work well because i was dabbling i wasn't doing the right things at the right time and and i had no no systematic process and so we're really going to be revealing why linkedin is the place to be how to leverage linkedin and how to get your your ideal clients your ideal you know audience coming to you um and, and by optimizing your profile and all of that so it's going to be it's going to be a good talk and if you're listening to this i recommend obviously being on uh, you know on, on the summit there at the end of october yeah i mean i, th I think for anybody that's maybe skeptical of linkedin because they've tried to do stuff on there before that's something that you started to address maybe let's let's tackle that a little bit because you know some people might think oh yeah linkedin sounds like a great opportunity but i I hired some guy for you know 100 bucks a month and and nothing happened. I didn't I didn't get any leads or I got a bunch of leads but nobody bought anything. Tell us a little bit about what you guys are doing differently than maybe some of the other folks that are trying to market in the LinkedIn space or um, really address that concern that LinkedIn didn't work. Yeah, so I think there's a few things. Um, you know, first off, I still go to people advisors' profiles all the time, and they're not optimized. I mean, they don't have the right header, the right, uh, you know, headshot image, their about section. So there's different areas of LinkedIn. There's five actually that we talk about optimizing, um, and, and it's one of those like when you first meet somebody, usually you Google the person, or if it's in a professional setting, you usually look them up on LinkedIn, and so it's first impression is a lasting impression. You know. So I would start out by saying, when somebody looks at your LinkedIn profile, does it attract them or is it repelling them? So that's the first thing we wanna do is really uh, really refine and optimize your, your profile. And then the second big thing I think that makes us different is, listen, we wanna have conversations and we wanna lead with value. We're big believers in value first. And I know a lot of other marketers, because we're getting hit, I mean, because we have financial advisor in our, in our timeline on LinkedIn, you know, we still show up on on the searches and things like that so we get hit up by marketers all the time like hey do you want to grow your financial business buy my thing without providing value without you know having any kind of meaningful conversation and so for us we want to position you um really to yes we want some quick wins and all that but we want to position you so that you are positioned for success for the long run right we're not going for the quick sell we want to have a conversation we want to provide value we want to continue to provide value and content and 
and different things like that. So yes, the people who are ready to move forward, we want to make sure we're attracting and giving them the opportunity to raise their hand and go ahead and but and Jeff I'm sure you've seen it I mean I know we've seen it. I know advisors have seen it where somebody connects with you whether it's Facebook LinkedIn regardless of the platform and their first words are hey buy my thing and it's like I don't know you from you know from Tom Dick or Jerry and you've provided no value you've done like that, to me that's the old way of selling and that you know I think that's a major turnoff so um you know we're like looking at, at the bar right <laughs> do what now it's like a pickup line at the bar trying to get somebody to go home with you that night. It's yeah, a little, I mean, aggressive. <laughs> sure, there's probably one in a thousand or one in 10,000 that it works and, you know, but, but hey, we want to build, we want that relationship and we want it to be a solid relationship and we want the foundation in place and everything. So, you know, we take the time to go through and look at your profile, look at the different sections of your profile and make sure they're all optimized. We go through and help you create massive value content and, um, you know, and, and a unique angle. And, you know, we've worked with several clients on that together, Jeff, you know, where you help come up with that unique mechanism, um, you know, in the wordsmith and everything where it builds curiosity and, and it, it attracts the right type of person. Um, so it's, you know, I guess, I guess at the end of the day, listen, we're not, we're not your, your low cost generic cookie cutter. Like we take the time to understand our client to understand who their perfect client is and then to really go through and as daniel mentioned before like in a lot of ways we we are the branding for our clients i mean they don't do a lot of outside branding and things like that and we're kind of building a branding a marketing machine for them and you know sometimes that takes a little bit of time um but when done right it, it consistently generates sales opportunities which leads to you know more clients more revenue so well, and obviously what's going on here is you're building, yeah, like you said, a marketing machine that's building organic leads that will continue to come in over time if you keep the process going. As you keep putting more people into that funnel, it builds yep. your pipeline, right? Thus funnels exactly. it. <laughs> um, traffic and, and uh, pipelines, right? So, um, so Jeff, so actually, I just... Sorry, one of the things that I just want to add as far as a lot of, you know, I've I've been on LinkedIn and working with advisors over the last, uh, you know, now it's I guess going six years and the perception and, and you kind of mentioned why do advisors kind of feel like it's not working while I was using it? Well, first of all, every time we sit down with a client, we just try to explain to them the fact that all LinkedIn is, is just a database. That's all it is. And all we're doing is we're able to go and start to use that database in a certain way. The other thing too, a lot of advisors say, hey, I got Sales Navigator, I bought it, I paid for it for months and I never got anything from it. Again, all Sales Navigator is, is just the way to search LinkedIn. It's a it's program. A, it's right? a tool. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. I, I can give you a shovel, but if you don't actually go out there and do the work to dig, you're never gonna have a hole, right? I mean, like yeah. just holding a shovel in your hand doesn't, doesn't lead to having a Right. Exactly. So th th there is a lot of misconceptions. And, uh, you know, what, over the years, I'm not sure what the, you know, this statistics is, is old because I've been using it for the last four years, but like 90% of financial advisors are on LinkedIn, but only about 4% are actually getting results with it, meaning that they're actually getting clients from it. And again, put it that way, just like cold calling works, you know, if you do it long enough, again, what we're all about is not going out there and kind of sweating and and, and doing it hard way. We're always looking for a better different ways how to actually engage and start to build relationships and how to actually go and build that so you can go out there on mass and start using uh you know software and and message as many people as you possibly can and try to get you know make the sale right away or you can actually build a system where again you're taking your potential clients onto a journey and you're building that pipeline and you're building that really scalable and sustainable way to you know generate clients and and having the ability to really connect with them at a human level, because I think this is where the biggest opportunity for advisors is right now, is connecting with people and letting them know, hey, I'm not a robot, you know, I'm I'm an advisor, but hey, I actually care about what I do and I care about my clients and I am here to give you value and I wanna help you. And I think this is really where the biggest change for advisors needs to be. And again, LinkedIn is just the platform that we use because LinkedIn as a database, has so much information that you can find out about your potential clients before you even get on a call with them. And if you know how to use this data, you can really go out there and get great results with it. And I think the journey is kind of the important thing because I know that there are other 
folks out there that are claiming to generate lots of leads through LinkedIn and maybe we should talk a little bit about what you guys consider a lead versus maybe what the industry is doing or the competition is, is saying a lead is. Uh, but the journey is a big part of this whole thing, right? Because, you know, just like in dating, as we're using that analogy on this uh, interview, uh, you don't go from first date to marriage in, in two dates, right? It's unless you're in Las Vegas, maybe, but that's uh, <laughs> but, but normally there's a bit more of a process to nurture that before you get a, a client. So it's the same, I think, in in building that relationship. They have to have a, a clear journey to nurture that all the way to the the becoming a client part. So uh, but let's let's circle back and talk about, um, you know, what is a lead? And. How does what you generate for a client through this process, through this journey, uh, how that how is that different from maybe what other people are saying a lead is? Yeah, and that's a great question because we've got to make sure we're on you know a level playing field if you're going to compare you know one market or one one program to another. Um, and there are a lot of different definitions of what's a lead, and you know I'm sure I mean I saw somebody promising like a thousand leads a month. Well, if you ask me, like. I mean, that's that's ridiculous. Like, I'm, I'd rather have fewer and much better qualified. So for us, we define a lead as as somebody who has already met our initial criteria. So they've already met our initial screening of our, you know, and so they're in the realm of our ideal audience. Um, and then from there, they have raised their hand and saying, yes, I'm interested in whatever the 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 offer, the main mechanism we have. And with that, we capture their name, their email and their phone number. Um, and so it's, you know, we may be adding hundreds of people to your, to your network, to your connections and stuff, but really for us, I mean, that's just, again, that's kind of a byproduct. Like that's great to have, and that builds your long-term audience, but we don't consider just having a connection, a lead for us. Mm -hmm. They then have to show interest. They have to raise their hand and through messaging and having an offer providing a value, like, Hey, we have this thing that will help address your major, you know, your biggest pain point or concern. Are you interested? Because when they raise their hand and say yes, that's a lead to me. That's somebody who's saying I have a pain point or you have something that I'm interested in. And that really is a, a you know, kind of a trigger that then pushes that conversation forward. Because otherwise it's just walking up to, you know, almost a random stranger in some ways, um, you know, saying, hi, my name's Michael. That's not a lead, right? I mean, that's just the connection. So for us, we define a lead as they've already met our initial screening, but then more importantly, they have raised their hand saying, yes, I'm interested in the thing you have to offer, the guide, the video series, the whatever that may be. And it's different for, you know, for, for di different advisors. Um, but, but when they raise their hand and say, yes, I'm interested, that's when, that's how we define a, a lead. So they're basically volunteering to take that first step on that journey, basically, that you have mapped out for them. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I guess in some ways, the first step is they accept the connection request. Sure. But then from there, yeah, they 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 are actively um, basically responding with, yes, I'm interested. And listen, you like, and I don't want to necessarily knock Facebook or Facebook ads. I know advisors who are doing well with that. But you're basically on through Facebook, you have to pay to generate those leads, to get somebody to raise their hand. My experience with Facebook is there's also a lot of bad accounts, poor quality leads and things like that. We have found that you can get much better quality, much higher quality, much more engaged people, much more professional executive business owner level um, uh, prospects to raise their hand through LinkedIn. And so that's where, you know, there may be another platform a decade from now that works better, but right now what we have found is LinkedIn is still the best place for advisors to be. If they're looking for the high quality, high value, you know, the, 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 the clients whose lifetime value of a client are in the tens of thousands, not like $500. Yeah, and obviously what you're selling, uh, sophisticated financial products, financial planning services, uh, that that may appeal more to us, you know, a sophisticated market, whereas uh, Facebook, it may be, you know, it's people that want to buy whatever, you know, uh, <laughs> who knows? I mean, I've seen all kinds of crazy stuff sold on there, everything from, you know, fire starters to whatever. I mean, yeah. you name it. Um, 
So we don't have a lot of time left. We've already zipped through most of that 40 minutes. So I'm going to uh, ask one last question here, and we're going to wrap this interview up. Um, what is, I guess, the most common myth that you find about prospecting that agents are still operating under today? You want to take this one, Daniel? Or? I, th I think the, the biggest thing, and, and tell me, is is just that, that you know, being as broad and wide as you possibly can so that you don't miss anybody. <laughs> and, and, you know, I think that's the biggest thing. And again, looking at, you know, my career in the financial services, you know, going from being that specialist in the first, you know, first year and then going broader and broader and broader, providing more services, more products, more designations, more, was actually serving as the opposite effect. And so often, when we start talking to advisors, and, and there's a book that I would recommend everybody to read, the one thing that has completely changed, you know, my business and how I operate, is that, you know, everything with focus, you know, you will get much better results. I mean, the, you know, the, again, the other analogy is, you know, taking a light and if you, you know, build it and then you have a laser, it's still using light, but now you have kind of zoomed in that beam, right? It can burn through metal. So probably the biggest thing is, is just, accepting the fact that when you look at people and advisors that are successful they usually find a specific audience specific market they have a very specific offer to them again they're not offering anything and everything to them right and those are probably the biggest thing and again it is a process and i think often you know i've worked with advisors you know for for years and it it doesn't happen overnight where you know you have an advisor that goes from being a generalist to a specialist because it has to be there, but it's you know it's a beautiful thing when we work with an advisor that was a generalist, and one day it just kind of clicks and they see you know the power. And even for me, when I started in this business doing stuff as a coach, uh, I sat down. This is I guess five years ago when I decided to work strictly with financial advisors, and literally it was like you know my, my, might sound a little corny, the, the heavens have opened, and it was like everything became so clear because when I started saying. Hey, Daniel, what do you do? I said, hey, I help financial advisors. So right there, that was very specific. And I helped them to generate leads, right? Now I became more referable. I became actually able to have a conversation. If I did run into a financial advisor, we already had something in common. So having that fact that if advisors start to focus on, and there's great books, one of them is you know the Blue Ocean Strategy and, and some of these things, to really start to focus on and, and realize that, hey, the more narrower I am actually working with somebody from the perspective of the audiences and then what the message is, the more success you're going to have. Because again, from my experience, being a generalist, you know, it was kind of like a new thing that I was talking to somebody and, and it just became a little bit more scattered. So it, it would be just really focusing on and start thinking about that niche marketing. It's a scary thing. And again, this is why we, we kind of, when we work with, you know, clients, I'm not going to say we hold their hands, but hey, it is very stressful to start thinking about it because again, you know, part of it is about mindset and part of it is uh, kind of being able to go and accept that fact. But at the end, I think really it's having that focus on, on a specific audience and offer. Yeah. I mean, having the right mindset, but also the right strategy and tactics, you know, I think the, the, uh, the scary part is that it is a little counterintuitive for a lot of people that aren't familiar with how marketing works that, you know, if I'm, narrowing my market down to just this tiny little slice, I'm going to have less business opportunities. But I, really, I would actually but say it's very counterintuitive because the financial industry talks about the opposite all the time. The more products, right. the more things you can offer, the more money you can make. So yeah, I have to agree with that. Right, right. Well, we're uh, we're at the end of our interview today and I know you guys are going to be on the the, uh, the summit. So I hope everybody here has a chance, has had a chance to kind of get excited about what you're going to talk about. Certainly don't miss your presentation because you're going to have some great content uh, at the upcoming summit. I want to thank you guys both for being a part of the summit as well as joining me today on Quantum Marketing Radio. And any uh, last words before we uh, wrap up today? No, connect, feel free to connect with us on LinkedIn. Um, myself and Daniel, I mean, just look us up, connect with us. We provide a lot of uh, value out there. You know, we usually post a couple, two, three videos a week with value and training and things like that. So, um, you know, would love to would love to have you as part of a connection, as part of our network. And again, we, we share a lot of value for free. So, yeah, we had your website up in the background here for a while. So, what's what's the best place to find you then? Yeah, it, I mean, either on LinkedIn or TrafficAndPipelines.com. 
Um, we do have a free a free guide that we give away and you can opt in and, and get it from there. But trafficandpipelines.com um, is our website. You can get our, you know, get access to our free guide and everything and then connect with us on LinkedIn. It'd be great. Well, thanks for taking the time, guys, for being on Quantum Marketing Radio. And we will see you at the end of October on the uh, Cracking the Prospecting Code Virtual Summit. Perfect. Thanks, Jeff. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks.